Uh, we're going to demonstrate here the placement of thoracic endograph for descending thoracic aneurysm. Uh, the screen is set up in what we call quad view. Uh, the main uh, screen is the fluoro. Uh, upper right is our uh, accessory monitor, which shows all the fusion images. Below that is transcranial Doppler monitoring, looking for emboli in the middle subalore. And in the bottom right, you can see these are our hands. And here you can see us introducing the 24 French sheath. Uh, the order measured about 38 to 39 millimeters in diameter. And so we elected to use a 45 centimeter gore endograph. Uh, most likely two endographs would need to be utilized. So here you can see the sheath has been advanced up into the high abdominal aorta. Uh, already in place, of course, we have a pigtail catheter and a curved lundiquist wire, which you can see is curved back on top of the aortic valve. Uh, next, we brought in our first device. This is the 4520, and we're going to place this distally first of all, and then place a second device uh, more proximal to that. Again, on the top right screen, the green circles are the origin of the celiac artery, the origin of the SMA, um, and the, the most uh, the one cir large circle is the uh, thoracic aortic immediately above the celiac artery. The second circle represents where the aneurysm actually starts. So here we're actually positioning the stent graft, and then we're going to shoot uh, an aortogram. Now this is done, a uh, pigtail catheter was actually pulled uh, more inferiorly, and then we injected uh, dye um, to look at the origin of the celiac artery. <coughs> here you can see we're centering down. Uh, we're going to cone it in and delineate the origin of the celiac artery. Again, the celiac comes out directly anteriorly. From the fusion images, we have a pretty good idea of exactly where it is, but we want to check that and get as much seal zone as we possibly can. So the injector was set on 20 for 20 with a PSI of 900, and um, a digital subtraction angiogram uh, was acquired. And here you can see the celiac artery is filling, but we really can't tell exactly where it's coming off. And for this reason, we moved it into a cross-table lateral position, so we knew exactly where the celiac was. And now you can tag the origin of the celiac artery pretty well. So we've confirmed that. You can, at that point, adjust any of the uh, fusion marks delineating the origin of the, the celiac. And then we're going to go ahead and deploy uh, this gore endograph again. Uh, you can see the handle in the bottom right. Um, this is a two-stage deployment. Uh, you unscrew the outer knob counterclockwise and then a pull of the uh, handle, stabilizing the catheter with your right hand. So the device basically has been positioned. Again, we're looking at the screen in the top right. We know where the celiac origin is. Um, and we're going to go ahead and deploy it. And then you can see it did deploy it. So now it's fully deployed. You can see it bulging into the aneurysm. We can then separate the, any, uh, the deployment handle or they from the shaft. And at that point, we can now retrieve the uh, delivery system. So one operator stabilizes the sheath. The other one uh, uh, retracts the delivery system uh, and maintaining the work position. The pigtail catheter, of course, has been trapped. It's then straightened uh, with, a, uh, in this case, a uh, Benson wire. And then typically it readvances uh, fairly easily. All we really need to know uh, with the next angiogram is the origin of the subclavian artery. And sometimes it kind of hangs up. You got to readvance the wire in order to get it up into the position where where you want to see it. Uh, at this point, well, we're going to readvance the pigtail catheter, hook it up to the injector, uh, bring up the second endograft into approximately position, 
again, what, if you look in the top right screen, what's been done is adjusting that overlay um, so that we know, uh, we do this real time um, as the, 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 the patient is being operated on, we're, we're fading in and out of these overlays uh, continuously to get the optimal angle and maximal coverage here. I'll pick it a little bit further forward than you actually need it. Second graft has now been brought up into position. We can then tag exactly where the origin of the left subclavian is. And, you know, here there really wasn't a big issue with the proximal landing zone, so we didn't really need to be too accurate. We've got, you know, good overlap here. And we then went ahead and deployed basically the device. And you can see it's deploying basically proximal to distal. And then, yeah, there's a little red knob basically you've got to disengage. Um, and rotate the inner deployment handle and that allows it to deploy to a full deployment. And now you'll see it deploy. And you can see it's going from distal to proximal. And now again, you've got to separate the delivery system What's been done now is the balloon has been brought up into position. This is the Gore Trilo balloon. And we've speeded this up a little bit. Uh, the balloon proximal, overlap, and distal. Deflating. Again, you always want to make sure these balloons are deflated before you reposition them. And then the overlap zone. And then the distal seal zone. Once you've done that, of course, you're ready to shoot a completion angiogram. Again, the nice thing about this trans uh, transcranial Doppler is that um, uh, here you don't really expect to see much, but if you've got to come close on that less of clavian on the carotid, uh, then it is very useful to give you real-time feedback about whether you're encroaching on the carotids, because you'll see the middle cerebral artery flows drop, or whether there's any evidence of embolization. Now we're going to deflate this balloon, move it proximally. See the hands pulling it back. You always got to make sure you don't pull out that sheath. You lose a lot of blood if you pull that sheath out by accident. It really shouldn't happen when you've got, uh, when you're up in the descending thoracic, but it certainly can happen when you're working on the uh, abdominal aorta and you're pulling down into the um, uh, external iliac artery. And that's going to be the final inflation. And the balloon is going to be retrieved and the completion aortogram performed once you're straightened and repositioned the pigtail, pigtail one more time. And you can see this was uh, nicely opposed at the top end. It's one reason for not coming around the corner um, so it doesn't bird beak. And you can see that the uh, aneurysm is nicely excluded. Thank you very much.